This is Communion Sunday, and accordingly, uh, we'll uh, all sup at the Lord's table. Just a couple things. Down here off of Nine Mile, uh, a little three-year-old was shot in the abdomen and uh, rushed to the hospital. The babysitter had guns in the house, and uh, the little kid got a hold of the gun. And, um, Anyways, according to the Warren Police, the, the child is, is going to survive, but guns are just um, one of the problems we have to deal with. But the guns aren't the problem, it's the people that have the guns. I mean, there's a lot of people that say we should do away with guns, and just the bad people will have one. Um, my wife also asked for prayer for her mom. She lives in the area of Naples, Florida, and I guess there's some big storms down there, so protection for that as well, and uh, just general, general prayers. Let's begin with a word of prayer, and then we'll get into communion, and then we'll transition into a message this morning. Gracious Father, we thank you. We thank you for the life of this little child that was shot. Father, we just pray your hand of protection, your hand of healing upon this child, Bless this child, and Father, these homes that have guns that are unsecure, and these places that have, you know, the idea that, um, you know, you can just do whatever you want with guns. This world has gotten so crazy. We just pray, Lord, that uh, people would use wisdom and discernment, and we pray your hand of healing on this little child as the child is in the hospital. And, uh, is attempting to heal. <laughs> Bless this little child. Bless Florida, Lord, and protect those uh, in, in Florida. We thank you and we praise you for what you're doing there. And this Tuesday, Lord, is, uh, is uh, election day. Um, some people don't think elections have consequences, and then that's all they do is complain. Much the same thing they do in life. So, Lord, we just pray that, that uh, your hand would be upon those uh, people that are in office, those people that are running for office, the incumbents that are in office and running for re-election. We pray that you would touch their hearts, that you would touch their minds, that you would be with each of them, Father God. Your word is very clear that when godly leadership is in place, the people rejoice. And when there's not godly leadership, we already know what happens. So we praise you and thank you. And Lord, we just pray that you would put into place leaders that uh, would lift up first your banner, that would govern with integrity, that would think of the people that uh, they've chosen to serve more and more and above all other things. Not power, not fame, not position, but, uh, you know, in, in our Republic, Lord, we just pray that uh, you would put the right people in place, both in the primary election this Tuesday and all the way to November uh, when the presidential election and the final elections are held this year. So, Lord, we ask your hand upon it. We pray upon this word that the word would go forth with meaning and understanding. Bless us as we look at your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I was talking to a young person this week. And, um, you know, the young person says, you know, God doesn't, uh, I don't connect with God. God doesn't connect with me. Basically, complaining about God um, repeatedly. And so I asked this person, well, what's your prayer life like? Well, I haven't prayed in a while. You know, that doesn't work. Do you read the Bible? No, I don't do that either. Don't have time for that. I'm busy. Mm. You know, do you worship God? No, I don't worship God. And then they're going to complain that they have no relationship with God. Relationships happen when you spend time in a relationship. If you don't spend time in relationships and if you don't actively engage in a relationship, by nature, relationships deteriorate because things that aren't cared for um, just go in reverse. They don't stay stagnant. And so it's important. And I was thinking about um, communion this morning. You know, we live in this crazy world. And... First of all, unless we even acknowledge who 
Jesus Christ really is, um, we're not going to really have a good relationship with Him. And if we don't seriously consider even the Lord's table as we sup with Him and as we we uh, participate in communion, you know, Jesus came down from heaven. He left glory and He suffered, died, was crucified, and was resurrected in our place. Amen. Amen. And so we have to understand the significance of the act of the Son of God, the only Son of God, Jesus Christ. And because of that act, um, we wouldn't even be here if He didn't resurrect. Amen. We wouldn't have religion. We wouldn't have a, a time of worship. We wouldn't have peace with God. We wouldn't have fellowship with with Him or with, with each other. So as we come to the communion table, I just want us to seriously remember what Jesus has done for us. The seriousness of what He's done. And in reality, we're called to celebrate communion. Um, a couple, couple communion Sundays prior, um, I said that you could take that word communion and think of it as our common union. You know, come and you, come and you, communion. And so it brings us closer to Christ. It, it unites us with Christ in a way that um, other faiths don't uh, have that connection. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, there's some guidelines in terms of how we're to participate and how we're to engage in communion. And um, I like to look at those. The, the first one is... Um, it's in 1 Corinthians 11, 27. It says, Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. So the first thing that we need to do when we think about communion is look up. Understanding the significance and the seriousness of the communion service we're to think about our connection with Christ. And as we sup with Him and dine with Him, you know, just a couple a couple days ago, we had that uh, display from the Olympics. You know, they backpedaled it quite a bit, but um, basically they made a mockery of God and a, a mockery of the, the Lord's table, the Leonardo da Vinci uh, portrait of the Last Supper. Um, and then they backpedaled it. Um, on the night that that was played, when people started to push back on it, the creative director from that whole bunch of nonsense um, said that it was the Last Supper, and then a couple of days later they said, well, that was a Greek god, Dionysus or whatever. But um, the guy already spoke his heart initially, and I'm pretty sure that's pretty much where it stands. But they were getting so much pushback and um, the Catholics in Europe were just having a fit over the whole thing. But, you know, it's okay in our world to mock God, um, and it shouldn't be. And yeah. so, um, like I said, the first thing as we consider communion is we should look up. We should look up to God, His great sacrifice, the fact that He sent His Son Jesus to die in our place, to take the spot that we should have been dead, and the work that He did on the cross to bring us reconciliation with God the Father and to bring us to a common union. Secondly, um, in the scriptures here in 1 Corinthians 11, in verse 28 it says, let a person examine himself then, meaning after, so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Self-examination is a tricky thing because most people think they're okay. That's not true. Amen. Um, if we honestly were able to assess and evaluate ourselves, we would know that our great need, our desperate need for uh, a great God, which we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. And in examining ourselves, we're to, to think about those things that uh, keep us um, separated from God, our sins, our choices. You know, some of us think, well, God covers all my sins so I can live any sloppy way. That's not the way it works. Mm -mm. Actually, God brings us to Him to clean us up so that we don't have our goofy ways. If, uh, if you know anything about Romans 12.1, oh He wants to renew your mind. 
basically he wants to change out your brain for his brain. And um, he said, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do we renew our minds? We renew our minds through the Word of God. We renew our minds through prayer. And with contemplation and meditation, not goofy meditation, but meditation on His Word, that brings us closer to Christ. Because when you use the word meditate, people think, oh, that must be some Eastern religion or you know, yoga pose or something like that. I'm not speaking of that at all. I'm talking about meditating on the Word of God, the Holy Bible, and coming close because it's His love letter to us. And so as we examine ourselves, we see how far we come uh, and how far we really are from God's standards, God's example, God's will, God's word, God's ways. And so when we examine ourselves, let us evaluate honestly where we really stand. You don't have to worry about examining somebody else because most of the time we compare ourselves to others instead of God's standard. Amen. And if we compare ourselves to others, that's not a comparison at all. I'm not as bad as Joe or Bob or, or, or Sally or Susie or whatever. You know, I'm not that bad. Well, you know, God doesn't grade on a curve. God's standard is perfection. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at God's standard and honestly evaluate ourselves based on God's true and honest standard, um, we can examine ourselves and come close to what God expects us to be. So... Firstly, we look look up. Secondly, we look within. And then in 1 Corinthians 11.33, it says, So then, brothers, when you come together, eat and wait for one another. So we look up. That's vertical. We look within. That's within us. And the third thing is that we look around. Because as we sup and as we break bread together with our fellow brothers and sisters, um, we should be in prayerful contemplation um, of, of, of other people and other people that we sup with and, and dine with, not just in a physical sense, but in a spiritual sense. Who can we pray for? Who can we bless? Who can we help? What can we do to make the body of Christ better, stronger? Um, who's the weak among us that actually needs some reinforcement and some support? <coughs> So that's why when we come together to eat, see, that's why, you know, um, TV church and radio church or internet church, it's not a bad thing, but it's not the best thing. In Hebrews, it tells us in Hebrews 11, to forsake not the gathering of the brethren. There's things that happen when we gather together that can't happen when we're looking at a TV screen or a computer monitor that don't happen when we come together in person. So let us distribute the communion elements, hold your communion elements till everybody is served, and then we'll corporately and jointly um, share the Lord's Supper together this morning. chapter 11 verses 23 and 24 the apostle Paul said for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed he took the bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me partake of the bread Corinthians 11 verses 25 and 26 the Apostle Paul went on to say in the same way he Jesus also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me 
For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Partake of the cup.